everyone, my name is Kisan, welcome to my channel! I'm really excited because it's crochet day today. Yeah, I know, it's been a while, we didn't do a crochet project together, so that's why I'm going to show you how to make a crochet bag today. And to be honest, I don't want the summer to end. No, it's more likely that I refuse to end the summer season and that's why I want to make a colorful crochet bag. First of all, I will explain you in detail how to make a granny square. Then I'll show you how to assemble all the squares. And finally, we will make the bag. So let's begin. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be using a 2.5 millimeters hook. And for my yarns, I'm going to be using these ones in different colors and they are 100% cotton, as you can see here in the tags. We're going to start by making a magic ring. Take your yarn and put the tail end of your yarn down the front of your hand. Then take the other part and bring it around your hand like this and cross over. So the tail end is underneath and you cross over like this the other part. Then take your hook Place it on top of the X and pull the yarn through. Take your hand out and secure it with your thumb and index finger like this. Take your working yarn, pull the yarn over and chain one. Now you can see that when you pull gently the tail end, you make the circle tighter. Let's start our granny square. Chain four. One, two, three and four and we're going to do a treble crochet wrap the yarn twice around the hook and go into the circle pull the yarn through and you can see we have four loops on the hook yarn over and pull through two loops yarn over pull through two loops and pull through the last two loops the four chains we made in the beginning here count as your first stitch. So we have one set of two and in total we will need six. So now chain two and make two more treble crochets in the circle. Let me show you how to make a treble crochet once again. Wrap the yarn twice around the hook and go into the circle. Pull the yarn through. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops and yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Make another treble crochet and you have your second set of two. Chain two and continue to make four more sets of two treble crochets. As you can see here, we have six sets of two treble crochets. To finish this row, pull the tail end of your yarn nice and tight. Now chain two and we're going to slip stitch to the fourth chain that we made in the beginning. So one, two, three and four. Yarn over, pull through and pull through again. Then secure the end of your first row by making a chain, snip the yarn and pull the loop to make a knot. This is how it looks like. To start the second row with another color, I make a slip knot. This is how I do it. I fold the tail end of the yarn around the crochet like this. Then I hold the yarn like this, flip the hook once, yarn over and pull through the loop. Easy peasy, right? We're going to slip stitch into this space here. Put your hook through into that big space. Yarn over and pull through. Now we're going to make five double crochets into this space. So, wrap the yarn once around your crochet. Yarn over and pull through two loops. And yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Once again, wrap the yarn once around your hook yarn over and pull through two loops and yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Repeat this three more times so you'll have five double crochets at the end. Here we go. We have 
one, two, three, four, five double crochets. Now make a slip stitch in the same space to form a petal. On the top of these two, we're going to make a single crochet. Just pull your yarn through, yarn over and pull through the loops. Then slip stitch into the next big space and make five double crochets. After the five double crochets, make a slip stitch to form the petal. Next, put a single crochet on top of the two treble crochets and slip stitch to the next big space. Continue this all around. To close this row, slip stitch to the first stitch like this. Make a chain and secure the end. For the next row, we will start on top of one of the single crochets that we made in between the petals. So, slip stitch, chain six, and put a single crochet on top of the third double crochet of the petal. So, one, two, three, here exactly. Then, chain three, and put a double crochet in between the petals right on top of the single crochet here then chain three and make a single crochet on top of the third double crochet of the petal continue this all around to finish this row slip stitch onto the third chain like this for the next row slip stitch onto the space here chain three and make two double crochets into the same space then make three double crochets into the next space chain three and make three more double crochets into the same space We just made the first corner of our granny square. In the next two spaces, make three double crochets in each space. After that, in the next space, we are going to make the second corner. So for that, we need to make three double crochets, then chain three, and three more double crochets in the same space. Continue this all around. Between each corner, you should have two sets of three double crochets. To finish this row, slip stitch onto the third chain here, then make a chain, snip the yarn, and pull the yarn to secure it. For the fifth row, slip stitch on top of the corner here in the space, then chain three. Make two double crochets, Then chain three and make three more double crochets to form your one corner. After that, chain three and make a double crochet on top of the fourth double crochet from the previous row. Look, one, two, three, and four, right here. Continue making five more double crochets. Now chain three and make the second corner. Remember, for the corner, you need to make three double crochets, three chains and three more double crochets. And follow the same pattern all around. Three chains, six double crochets, three chains, corner and so on. For the last row, slip stitch on top of the double crochets here. Then we will make single stitches all around like this.
To finish it, slip stitch onto the first stitch. Chain one, snip your yarn off and pull your yarn. There we have our first square. I will make 18 squares in total for my bag. So I will have 12 squares on the front of my bag and three on each side. For the bag, I will only have fabric. So here you can see all the squares. I place them like this to have an overview before putting all the pieces together. Now let's assemble the squares together. We're going to sew them with an invisible stitch. So take two squares like this and place them right sides together. So we're going to go from the front to the back, okay? So through the back loop only and through the back loop of the second square. Make a knot to secure it like this. Then take your needle and go into the next back loop and then the corresponding back loop of the second square. Then come back around and go through both squares by corresponding the back loops again and pull your yarn through. This is simply what we're going to do all the way across. I continue to assemble my squares together. To make it easier and quicker, I assemble sets of three squares together and then I assemble the sets together to have my rectangle shape at the end. And voila, the rectangle here will go in the front and these two are the sides, but we didn't finish with the crochet. So slip stitch here in the corner, then chain three and make a double crochet here in the stitch. You see here in the chain? Continue to make double crochets all the way down. When you reach the end on this side, chain three and turn your work. We're going to make a double crochet here in the first stitch, on top of the previous double crochet. I hope you can see it. You see here, on top of the previous double crochet, like this. Then continue all the way down. At the end of this row, you can either finish here or make another row, it depends on the size you want. At the beginning, I wanted two rows then I changed my mind and I made three. So here, let me show you how to continue the side with three rows. You start with three chains. Here we will make two double crochets. Here one double crochet on the whole, then two. One double crochet here and then two double crochets. So in total, you will have a set of three double crochets for each row on this side. Then here, you continue as you did in the beginning. You make double crochets on each stitch and you make also three rows on each side all around. This is how it looks at the end. Now, to make the bag, we will take some measurements. I measure the width and while measuring, I slightly pull the crochet to make it straighter. Here I have 45 centimeters and I do the same thing to measure the height and it's 36 centimeters for me. I repeat the same process for the sides. But bear in mind that the height of the side pieces has to be the same as the front. You see 36 centimeters here should be fine as well. For the width, I'll go for 16 centimeters. According to the measurements that I took, here are the pieces that we will need. For the bag, I will also make a lining, so you have the details of the pieces needed for the lining as well. Now that you have all the details, let's prepare the pieces. Here I'm prepping the front and the back of my bag. I pin both layers, so while cutting my pieces, the fabric won't move. Here I'm tracing the bottom pieces, the sides and the handle attachments.
I pinned both layers and cut the pieces. Then I prepare interfacing for the exterior fabric of my bag. So we will need one front and back, two sides and one bottom. After I press my pieces with the interfacing. Once that's done, I take my front and back pieces with the interfacing. I fold the top edge, so the longest edge, by 2 cm and press all along. Then I open the fold and fold by 1 cm twice and press like this. Do the same thing for the side pieces. I repeat the same thing with the lining. Here, I pin the front crochet piece onto the front with the interfacing. I pin all around. I do the same thing with the side pieces. And by the way, my side pieces are not folded and pressed on the top edge, as you can see. I made a mistake and I realized it way after that I forget to do this step. So don't pay attention to my mistake. I told you to do it in the previous step, so you're good. So all around 5mm from the edge. This is how it looks so far. Now we are going to assemble the pieces. Take the bottom and the side pieces, place them right sides together and pin the sides. We are going to sew both edges here. Do the same thing with the lining pieces. After that, press the seams open for the exterior and the lining. And here I realized that I made a mistake, so I had to undo the seams on the top edge of the side pieces. I really hated that moment. Then I tried to figure out how to continue without losing time. So here we go. Instead of folding by 1 cm twice, I folded by 2 cm once, pin the sides to secure them. Then I sewed both top edges. After, I placed the bottom right sides together like this with the front and I pin all along. Then on the other edge, I pin the back right sides together as shown here. I sew here one centimeter from the edge and only between these marks. I repeat the same thing with the lining pieces. Now I pin the sides together like this. Then I sew one centimeter from the edge all the sides of the back. I do the same thing with the lining of course. Take the four handle attachment pieces, fold the shoulder edge, right sides together like this and pin the side. Then sew the edges. Now turn them the right way around. Look how easy this is. Magic. It's time to place the handles. I measure 14 cm from the side seam and mark with a pin. I do the same on the other edge. Then I place the handle like this and take the attachment. I wrap it around the handle and pin like this. I repeat the same thing with the second attachment. Then I do the same thing on the other side. Here I take the line in and I turn it the right way around. I push the corners gently. Then I place the lining inside the bag. The lining and the bag are now placed right sides together. I pin the edges all around the bag, but I leave an opening for later. Now we can sew one centimeter from the edge, except here, as we are leaving an opening. I struggled sewing all the layers, so I will sew by hand some of the parts. There we go, now it's the reveal. Let's turn it the right way around. Here, the corners, I prefer to avoid sewing them with my machine because the layers are too thick. So I will do it by hand and honestly, I don't want to damage my machine. I'm doing an invisible stitch to finish up my bag.
I also added press studs because I don't like when the sides of the bag bend towards the outside. You know what I mean? I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can comment down below. And something really, really important, if you want to support me, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. See you next time. Bye bye.